Hey guys, Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. It is time to kick off a mini series covering precision reloading of 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, I've brought you a bunch of different series on precision reloading, and I like to keep it fresh and I like to keep it new each time. So we're gonna show you some different equipment. We're gonna show you some different components. It's gonna be anchored around the Forrester Coax reloading press. I hinted in the unboxing and overview video, which you should check out if you're interested, that we're gonna be doing some 6.5 Creedmoor. Now's the time. I'm also gonna be using the RCBS Charge Master lights. We're gonna do electronic powder dispensing as a, opposed to manual throwing and or trickling. We're gonna use some new components. We're gonna use Starline 6.5 Creedmoor brass. It's new and it's awesome. It is available in the small primer pocket variety and the large primer pocket variety, which gives you more options for how you wanna load your ammunition for 6.5 Creedmoor and the quality is top notch. We're also gonna be using the standard Ellie Wilson case gauge that I use for all of my rifle reloading really excited about the Forrester dies. We're gonna use those in this series as well. And that is actually the subject of this video. I thought I'd talk to you about the different dies that Forrester offers for the Precision Reloader, show you a couple examples, we'll show you how they're set up, and then in the next videos, we're gonna go through the entire reloading process, look at some new load development methods that I've been experimenting with. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's take a quick look at the dies that Forrester offers. First, we'll talk about sizing dies. Now there are three different types of sizer dies that Forrester offers. The full length sizer D primer, which I've got here. They've also got a sizer called the bushing bump die, which instead offers bushing controlled neck sizing and controlled shoulder bump. So you can swap out different bushings, account for different neck thicknesses, and get the same bullet tension. You can also dial in the exact shoulder bump you want for the shoulder of the case that you're sizing. Now with a precision bolt action type of scenario, you're gonna want a thousandth of an inch, thousandth and a half maybe. You can easily dial that in with the bushing bump die. The third die is the neck only sizer die, which is like other neck only sizers in that it doesn't size the body, doesn't bump the shoulder, just sizes the neck. Now the full length sizer and depriming die is one of Forrester's most popular because of a few things. First, it's got the elevated expander ball, which is a unique feature. It starts the expansion of the neck while the neck is still supported by the neck sizing portion of the die chamber. So perfect alignment is maintained and that results in better case concentricity. They also offer a service where they can hone out the interior of the die. By default, it's going to size to min-spec SAMI specifications for the particular cartridge that you're reloading for. Now, if you send Forrester some fired brass from your rifle, they can match it to your chamber, and that means it's really more like a neck-only sizing die in, in its effect, in that it's going to do minimal sizing along the body. It's going to size the neck just the right amount for the particular brass that you've sent them with a particular case wall thickness in the neck portion. And the nice thing about that is it gives you complete concentricity. It does minimal sizing of the brass, but it's going to continue to ensure or loading after loading that your brass is going to chamber properly. With the bushing bump die, you have that control with the bushing over the case neck thickness variation, which is kind of nice. You can swap out the bushings and reload different brass or reload some that are turned, some that are not turned, that kind of thing, and also control the shoulder bump. So the full length sizer is really the best solution if you have everything dialed in and a very repeatable formula. And the bushing bump die is really great if you're working on different loading scenarios to find the best load and the best components for your rifle, or if you want comp to vary and load different types of brass and not have just, just one formula that you're working with. So I'll show you how to set up this full length sizer die in just a moment. Let's next talk about bullet seating dies. 
there are two different seating dies that Forrester offers, and they're both bench rest seaters. Really, the only difference is one comes with a micrometer. This is the ultra micrometer seating die. And the standard seater doesn't have the micrometer. It has the same internal patented sliding collar that supports the case body uh, before, during, and after the bullet seating process all the way until the end of the bullet seating process, which results in really, really good concentricity, really tight tolerances between that sliding collar and the body. And the, the finish is, is also just excellent. It's, it's silky smooth. The micrometer, of course, is an excellent feature because you can you know, set it way too high, basically, to start with, take a measurement, figure out how long it is, and then turn it down the appropriate number of thousandths of an inch to get it dead on. I just tried it a moment ago while I was preparing for this video, and I was off by a half of a thousandth of an inch, and I call that awesome in my first try. So that makes setting things up and fine-tuning things real easy. We will set this die up as well. So why don't we move over to the press here and I'll show you how the dies are set up and I'll show you how they work. Okay, so we've got our brand new die. We've already cleaned it. We're gonna loosen the cross bolt on the lock ring so that it spins freely. Good. Insert the lock ring into the press with the cross bolt facing us. Screw the die up a little bit. We're gonna raise the ram to the top of the stroke. Screw the die down, okay? And then we're gonna screw it just a little bit more for just a little bit of cam over. I'm not quite there yet. Yeah, something like that, okay? We don't want it to be too stiff. And then we need to keep this lock ring and the die positioned together. Tighten the lock ring. It doesn't need to be super tight, just so that it won't spin. Insert it back to the press. So I've got a lubricated case here. This is a Starline small primer case. Go ahead and size that. And then check it with our Ellie Wilson case gauge. And we're above the bottom step. We're below the top step. So we're good to go. It's just that easy. Next we remove our sizer and we ensure that our lock ring is loose on the cedar. Same thing, orient the cross bolt towards us, screw the die up a little bit, raise the ram to the top of the stroke. Now we carefully screw this down. Let me show you up close what we're talking about. Right here, we want to screw this until we feel the die stop, that means the spring-loaded collar is all the way up. Now we want to back it off exactly one turn. Now our baseline adjustment is complete. You can see the cross bolt here, so I'm just going to tighten the lock ring from this position. Okay, make sure it is inserted, removed and inserted easily. Now we're gonna screw the seating cap up. I'm gonna use a reference cartridge. This is the fastest way. And then screw this down, micrometer, until we feel the seating plug hit. Okay. Now we're going to insert our case. Who needs a bullet seated? Insert the bullet and seat it. And then we will check our cartridge overall length or check to the O-Jive with comparator and make micro adjustments accordingly. Very easy, very straightforward. So there you go. For this project, we're gonna use the ultra micrometer seating die and the full length sizing die from Forrester, both bench rest quality. Uh, this full length sizer I could have honed out to match the brass I'm reloading and the chamber for my rifle. I think I might do that at a later date, but we're pretty much ready to get into the full end-to-end -end reloading process. We've already talked about the coax from Forrester, we've talked about the dies, 
it's it's now time to get down and dirty with reloading end to end for 6.5 Creedmoor, which is what I'm going to be doing in the next video. So you're going to want to stay tuned and check that out. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.